So welcome, FAR Professionals Guild community. Welcome to everybody who's new, who's joined on for the first time today. If you're here for the first time, you're in for an absolute treat. And I hope that, well, not I hope, I am sure you're going to make the decision to join on every single one of these coaching meetings because of the massive value that we bring to you to help you run better businesses. So before we start with the great topic that we have planned for today, which is all about delegation, we're going to get to it in a minute. Let's see who remembers what our 2022 word is. So every year we have a word. And let's see who remembers what our 2022 word is. Oh, lovely. Okay, so Mariana, that was very quick. And she put it in capital letters. Our 2022 word is exactly that, abundance. And I absolutely love this quote that says, abundance flows to me easily and freely. I embody abundance. I think this is an awesome affirmation, actually. So if you want, take a screenshot of it. It is a great way to wake up in the morning and say abundance flows to me easily and freely and I embody abundance. So that is what our year's focus is. Abundance in every form. So abundance in learning, abundance in clients, abundance in uh, revenue, abundance of friends, abundance in love. It's abundance in all encompassing and all aspects of our lives, okay? So as, I, as we discuss the topic that we're going to discuss today, I want you to keep in the back of your mind this word abundance and think to yourself, how can you incorporate our word into what we're going to learn today, which is the art of delegation? So before we start with our discussion, I have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask you. And please, let's go into the chat box. It's a great way for us to interact and for everybody to see what's on your mind. How many of you feel like you are working endlessly on a hamster wheel, going round and round and round, but you never really get that full, full sense of accomplishment. So you never get that sense of, yes, done it, great, awesome day. I've accomplished everything I've had to accomplish. So how many of you feel like this little hamster on this wheel? Okay, let's go. Let's have a look, everyone. Let's see who. Okay, so Jeeva says definitely. Mariana says yes, hamster wheel. Marilee said, how did I know? <laughs> Lisa says yes. Welcome, you two. Janelle, I uh, know Janelle. I expected her answer to be first. She says me. Gail says yes. Danae says her list never ends. Bandila is also saying me. Okay. Jenny saying yes. Anna says definitely. Okay. Any more? Nomsa, Dominique, Jenny, oh my word, always, especially with a balance of life and work. Okay, so this definitely seems to me like it's a common denominator among not only our industry, but I think people, life, across all industries in general, right? Samantha says yes, especially now that I am also acting event and conference manager. Wow, Samantha, that is fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You know what they say, if you ever want something done, you give it to the busiest person that you know. So that's a good sign, Samantha. Well done. Okay, so now, would you like to do things in a way that would save your time? You can just answer yes or no. Okay. Would you welcome anything, a system, a method, a way of doing something that would help you save your time? And I'm sure I'm, we are going to get 100 yeses. So I'm going to go on to the next question. 
how many of you would like to see growth in your business? Uh, Samantha says, sign me up. That's so funny. And again, I don't think one of you here is going to say, no, I don't want to see growth in my business. You wouldn't be on the school if you didn't want to see growth in your business. So in order to grow, in order to grow, and in order to save your time, does anybody know what you need? Let's see if you can get this answer. So for growth, and in order to save time, save your time, what do you need? Let me know. Okay, so Jeeva says delegate, okay? You're getting there, but I want to know what you need before you delegate. Charlotte says planning ahead helps me save time, okay? Mariana says split responsibility and hone in on all of our talents. Katerina says plan of action. Gail is getting warm. She says help. Tiffany says help an organization. Liz says organize my priority. Missy says systems. Janelle says time management. Samantha says systems. Nolene says support. Laniel gets the prize. Okay. You need people. You need people. Okay. These are my people, by the way, in one of my businesses. These are my people. So in order to grow and in order to save your time, do you all agree with me? Can we agree on that before we move forward? That you need people, okay? Just say agreed. Then we can move forward, okay? Agreed, agreed, agreed. Okay, I'm setting you all up for something with all these questions that I'm saying. So I want you to remember that you've just all agreed that we need people in order to grow. Okay, right, so let's get moving on. I'm going to show you a list now, okay? And it's a list that really revolves around why managers hesitate to delegate. I'd like you to look at the list. I'm going to quickly read through them with you, but I want you to share with the group, with all of us, which numbers are your biggest fears? Okay, or why you as an individual hesitate to delegate. So go into the chat box and put in your number. So number one is time. Some managers feel it's going to take me far too long to, to explain to my people what I need done, okay? Or the person might take too long to get the task done. Two is fear that the task will not be done accurately or it will not be completed on time. Three is trust. Don't trust the team enough. And another one, don't trust the delegation process. There's a difference there, okay? Then the number four is skill. People don't have the right skill set or it will take too long to upskill the team to get to the point to where they need to be. Okay, so this is quite interesting. So we have three from Patricia, trust. We have Lucia, trust. Jiva, fear. Gail, fear. Dominique, fear. Tiffany, trust and skill. Charlotte, time. Liz says fear and skill. Nolene, fear and skill. Katerina, skill. Missy, fear. Danae, fear. Devan, fear. Kirambrin. Who is that? Kirambrin. Hello. Two and three. So that is fear and trust. Okay. Mariana says four, skill set. Lindiwe says trust. Janelle says time and fear. Jenny says fear and skill. Karen says trust. Janelle has added now. She says one, two, and three. <laughs> okay, Bandile says skill and trust. Deline, time and fear. Danae, 
Oh, Surieta and two. Okay, Tandi says, hi, Tandi. Nice to have you here. Says two and four, fear and skill. Hi, Valerie. Nice to have you here. Okay. And Karen says two, fear. Okay, so that's very, very interesting. So now I want you to remember and keep this photo in your mind of what your fear is or why you hesitate to delegate as I take you through a step-by-step -step process on delegation. Okay, now, before I start the step-by-step, -step, those of you who know me well enough are going to understand why I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. But I need you to go into today's session without any excuses being made for what I show you or the points I bring up. So when I show you something, please, you are not allowed to make an excuse for why you don't do what you see on the screen in front of you. Do we have a deal? And I'll tell you why I say this, because if you're going to live in a place of excuses, we are never going to get that growth. You will never get it, I can tell you now, and you will be that hamster in that wheel forever. Okay, so do we have a deal? No excuses, whatever I show you, you take it, you own it, and by the end of today's session, you will have come up with a plan of how you're going to delegate, and then I've got a little bit of a challenge for you at the end of the, of the session. Okay, so everybody seems like, they're ready for this. They've deal, 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 deal. Lovely. Great. Superb. Okay. Now, I first, before I teach you how to delegate, I want you to understand what you should be delegating. Because a lot of you are probably doing stuff that you are not supposed to be doing. Okay. So let's have a look at the three main questions that you need to ask yourself. And as I ask you these questions, I'm hoping that you've got a pen and paper and that you're writing down these things that I'm going to discuss with you now. Number one says, what am I not good at, okay, but is essential to the running of my business? What am I not good at, but is essential to the running of my business. So I'll take ownership now and say that I'm not good at admin. I'm not good at budgeting. I'm not, not good at it. But if somebody doesn't do it, our business doesn't run, right? Okay, so for example, there's examples there in front of you. Accounting, social media, stock orders, displays, creating displays, creating marketing calendars. I don't know. I want you to think and, and I want you to write it down right now, not afterwards. Now, what are you not good at but is totally essential to the running of your business? Okay? Number two, what are the essential daily routine tasks necessary for the running of the business? Okay, so they daily things, they have to happen on a daily basis. So maybe stock take is daily in your business, okay? And the business cannot do without it. So I've given you a great example here, which is this daily business analysis. For those of you who are doing our course with us, know that the most important tool that you have to run your business daily is this daily business analysis. Okay, if you're not doing it, best you implement it from tomorrow, because that is how you, that's the lifeline of your business and how you make decisions on a daily basis. Okay, but it is a routine task. So what I'm trying to say is it could be delegated. Okay, and number three, what am I really good at? Okay, that takes up a lot of my time. So again, I'll tell you what I'm really good at that takes a lot of my time is dealing with clients. I love 
talking to clients. I love interacting with therapists. I love training them, but it takes up a lot of my time, okay? So maybe I shouldn't be doing all of that, okay? But this is for you. This is for you to think, what are you good at? Are you good at creating social media content, but it takes up a lot of your time? Are you good at planning promotions? Are you good at marketing? Are you good at putting events together? Think about everything that you do, what you're really good at, but takes up a lot of your time. Okay, so now those, whatever you have written on point one, two, and three are primarily the tasks that you need to let go of and you need to delegate very urgently. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so this is just a little summary chart. I am going to go through each point very clearly with you and ask you a few questions as we go along. But there is a process to delegation. It's not just delegate and finished. Okay, so here are, it is five steps, but six elements to it. And I will go through each one. This is just for you to see it as a summary. And this will also be in your workbooks for those of you who are doing the course. Okay. So let's start and have a look at our five rules. Okay. There's six little processes in it, but there's five main rules when it comes to delegating. Now, as I take you through these rules, I actually would like you to share in the chat box if ever you've delegated, but you haven't done it in the way that the five rules show. Okay, because this is how we're all going to grow from each other's experiences. Right. Number one, clarify the task in your own mind first. That means what needs to be done, by when does it need to be done, and what is the outcome that you want. So before you have even delegated it, is the task clear in your own mind? Does this make sense? Everybody, just go into the chat box or give me a thumbs up. Does this make sense? Clarify the task in your own mind first. What needs to be done by when and what is the outcome? Okay, great. So now we move on. And this is probably the most important part of delegation is delegate to the right person. Now, this is the part where you are going to match the task that is needed to be done to the skill, ability, and knowledge of the person that you are giving the task to. So let me give you an example. Let me ask you a few questions. Would you delegate the task of the daily business analysis to somebody who doesn't know how to pull reports from your software system or who has never ever worked on an Excel spreadsheet? So say yes or no. Would you delegate a task of the daily Okay, so Marianne, I don't even need to repeat it. Marianne says, absolutely not. Why not? They don't have the skill set. Okay, now we need to remember this because a lot of times this is why our delegation fails. We give it to somebody who doesn't have the skill, who doesn't have the ability is another thing, and who doesn't have the knowledge on how to do it. Now, here's another question for you to answer yes or no to me. Would you delegate the task of phoning clients to offer a VIP promotion to somebody, okay, to someone who is very soft-spoken and 
very, very introverted. Would you do that? Would you delegate that task to somebody? Absolutely not. Okay, so Missy says never. So quite interestingly, when I chat to, Mariana says only to the person that has the personality and sass. Of course, you are going to give the task of the phone conversation when you're selling something to somebody who has personality and sass, of course. But the strange thing is, often when I chat to business owners and they tell me their delegation issues, they will often delegate a task to somebody who is, A, doesn't have the ability, doesn't have the personality to do that task. So remember, a very important rule, and that's why it comes second. So first, clarify the task in your own mind. Second, delegate to the right person. You're going to match the skill, ability, and knowledge to the task that is going to be given. Okay. Radio. Third. Oh, my word. Now. This is where most people go wrong in delegation. This famous word called communication. Okay. Now, you need to communicate three things and you need to communicate them super clearly. One, the task. Two, the outcome. So what must the end result be? And three, super important, the deadline. So Lanil is saying it seems so obvious, but clearly a huge challenge. Lanil, you have absolutely no idea how many messages, calls, and emails I get about, please help me, Marisa, I don't know how to get my staff to do things or I don't have time to do this. And I'll say, delegate it. And they'll say, oh, no, 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 can't do that. So let's have a look at two scenarios here. I would like you to tell me, I'm gonna give you two scenarios. You can have a look at them on your screen. Which option is clearly communicated and which example shows the person that you have trust in them, okay? So let's have a look and you can tell me either you're going to say example A or you're going to say example B. Okay, so example A. Mary, please look over this treatment menu to see that the prices are correct. Who of you thinks that this is clear? I mean, I think it's clear. Mary, look at this treatment menu and check that the prices are correct. I think it's clear in my opinion, okay? Who of you think that this is clear? No, no, Missy says no, no, no. Any of you think that it's clear? So I think it's clear. Okay, so Tiffany agrees with me. She thinks it's clear, okay? Anybody else think it's clear? Surietta says, no, clear, but not precise <laughs> from Patricia. Okay, so now I'm going to show you example B. Okay, same scenario, same story. And this says the following, Mary, I have a very important and urgent task that takes attention to detail. And I think that you are the best person for this. Please look over this treatment menu, check prices, read all the copy, and then come back to me with any wording changes and price corrections. Please check carefully and see if we are missing anything. This document is going out to potential clients, so it really needs to impress them, okay? This needs to go to design by tomorrow at 12 noon. Can you get this back to me today by 6 p.m.? Will that be enough time for you? 
Who thinks now, after seeing example B, that example B is better than example A? We're actually just asking for the same thing, right? So Mariana says, holy crap. <laughs> that would make me jump and be anal about getting it all right and in the time frame and be proud of producing my results and my feedback. Okay, so this is quite interesting because Mariana has spoken to us as an employee now, not as an employer. So everybody read what she has said in the chat box very carefully. She says that would make me jump and be anal about getting it right and in the time frame and be proud of producing my results and my feedback. Okay, so now Karen says clear and precise instructions with great. Okay, another thing Karen picked up great motivation that you trust her. Charlotte, no room for confusion. Tiffany, much better with more info and specific details. This motivates the therapist and adds responsibility and gives her a deadline. Okay, so what I want you to please take note here, you're very welcome to take a screenshot too. Everything that I have put in bold are the most important parts of the communication of the task. So look at what I've said there. Very important and urgent. As soon as you say those words, the person goes, ding dong, ding dong. This is, all, this is really important. Okay. Then you've said it takes attention to detail. So you've told them you've got to be super careful when you look at this. Then what does it say? You are the best person for this. What does that give? Trust. In your comment you show trust or in your delegation you show trust okay then you've said please check carefully right again you've said be very careful tying into the same comment of attention to detail then you've told them going where's it going to our potential clients so it needs to impress them okay then she'll go okay and then what's the most important thing as well? The deadline. It's got to go to design. Can you get it back to me by 6 p.m. today? So can you see how it's the same thing? It's just put across in, with different words. It's communicated super, super clearly. And you have covered the three main points that we discussed, which is the task, the outcome, and the deadline. Okay, got it? Great stuff. Next, number four. It doesn't end there, by the way. It doesn't end there. Check in. This is vital, especially until you have built that person up to a stage where you know that you give them a task and you don't need to even check in. But this takes time. Number four takes time. So you need to do it and you need to be very careful that you don't leave checking in to the last hour. Check in on the progress. Check in if they need any further clarifying with sufficient time to allow for correction. So if I asked her for six o'clock today, and I gave her the task at 9 a.m., when would be a reasonable time for me to check in with her? So I gave her the task at 9 a.m. to Mary, and I asked her for it by 6 p.m. Please tell me when you think is reasonable for me to check in that gives enough time to allow her to correct. Yes, 1 p.m. or noon. So don't wait until 5 o'clock and say, Mary, how are you doing? Are you close to handing it in? It's too late. Okay. Also, by checking in, something very important happens. And have a look. It's my last point there. Evaluate capabilities for future responsibilities. Now, that is super important. You might have made a mistake. You might have thought that this person task 
it matches, right? That their knowledge and their skill set and their ability matches. But when you check in, you realize, oh my word, I've made a mistake. This person doesn't have attention to detail actually. Then you know for future, right? Wrong person to delegate that task to. Okay, makes sense. And next, appreciate and give praise. Now, it is praise sandwich time. Does everybody remember what a praise sandwich is? You all remember what a praise sandwich is? Laniel, I know it's one of your favorites. You said that the, one of your favorite, favorite things is the praise sandwich. So it is definitely praise sandwich time. And the reason for that is that this task may not have been done correctly. It may not have been done on time. It could perhaps have been done better. And you need to give that feedback, right? But do it in the form of a praise sandwich. So first, so your bun, your hamburger bun, is first praise what has been done right. Okay, then you're going to do the filling. So the hamburger patty or the salami or the delicious ham and cheese. Then you're going to give any corrective feedback that's going to come in the middle. So you'll say, Mary, um, it was meant to be at me at 6 at 7 p.m. You've put me under a bit of pressure. I found a couple of spelling errors in it. All your correction gets done. Okay. And lastly, you praise again with further responsibility if it's warranted, or you praise again, thank you so much for your effort. Thank you for your attention to detail, for picking up these kind of, uh, oh, thank you, you saw that I duplicated something on the treatment menu. Find the praise, okay? Never end on correction. Please, everybody, this is vital. And the reason for this is, if you end on correction, the chances of that same person messing up the next thing you delegate to them is very high. Why? Because they're fearful. <laughs> they're scared of what the outcome might be. So when you give your feedback, you give it as a praise sandwich. Okay, praise, correction, and praise. Make sense, everybody? So what is our outcome? When you delegate in the way that I have just shown you, the best part is the outcome because there's two winners when you delegate like that. Two winners. There is you as the person giving the instruction or giving the delegation or the task, and there's the person that is doing the task. Both of you have won. Isn't it amazing? And isn't it the best feeling on earth for you to know that something has been done correctly, efficiently, on time, and that you have got two winners as your outcome? Yes. So Mariana says that's super, super powerful. So, Two more things to chat about before we move on. First of all, I said to you at the beginning, go into this with a mindset of no excuses. So I hope there has been no excuses. One of the most important things when delegating a task is to go into the delegation process with a positive mindset, with a mindset that what you are about to delegate is going to be done correctly. That is half the challenge, by the way. Half of the challenge is your mindset as the person delegating. If you're going to delegate like this, okay, I'm going to ask Marisa to um, order some coffee and toilet paper or to do our stock orders this week. But I know, I, I know that she's going to get it wrong. And I know that um, she won't get it done on time because she always runs late. But let me give it to her to do anyway and let's see how she does. That already sets you up for failure. 
because your mindset is she always does it wrong. She always runs late. Let's see how she does. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. No, you must go into the delegation process of Marisa is going to get this right. She is. She's going to get it right. And she's going to do it on time because I'm going to be super clear on the task, the outcome, and the deadline. And I might even just throw in a little incentive to get her to do it quicker. Okay. What happens there? There's two winners. So now what might be on all of your minds is, okay, Marisa, great. You've given us these five amazing steps. I'm going to go back to that one sheet, okay, to the summary sheet. Okay. You've given us this process that sounds totally amazing. But what happens if we don't have anybody in the business that we can delegate the type of tasks that we need to? Anybody feel like that at the moment? What happens if there's nobody in the business where you can match skill, ability, and knowledge? Does anybody have the answer for that? Because the answer really is quite simple. Okay, so Missy is saying outsource. That's one option. What's another option? No, not do it yourself. Definitely not. We want to delegate. Remember, we want to free up our time. Leandra says, okay, Leandra's getting warm and she's, she's got the second solution. So one is outsource. Two, train and upskill. Okay. Very importantly, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to train them, by the way, because that's another thing that could be creeping into that mind of yours as an excuse. Oh, no, I don't have time to train. Of course, you don't have time to train. You're running a business. Get somebody else to train. Put them on an upskilling program. Okay. And then Danae and Lanil have found solution number three. Perhaps you are hiring incorrectly. Maybe your next front desk person, maybe your next um, therapist or your next manager or your next salon coordinator, spa coordinator needs to be hired differently. So instead of looking for the skill sets of how do they speak over the phone, all the obvious skill sets, Look at where you need delegating to. If it is stock control, if it is pulling reports, if it is attention to detail kind of tasks, then you hire according to that criteria. Does that make sense, everybody? So some of you might be feeling frustrated because there's nobody that you can give the kind of tasks that you need to. That means that you have one of three options. Outsourcing, upskilling and training, or number three, the next hire that you do, the next person that gets employed, gets employed according to a different set of criteria. Okay, so everyone, how does, how does that make you feel? I mean, how do you feel about this delegation process now? Go into the chat box and let me know. How do you feel about this process. Is there something new that you learned? Is there something that I mentioned that you are not doing perhaps in how you are delegating? Maybe share with the group, what is it that you are taking away from these steps that you can improve in when you next delegate a task? Okay, so Janelle is saying makes a lot more sense, definitely work better, um, applying it straight away. Excellent, great, Patricia, that's awesome. Okay, everyone, demand deadlines. Yeah, first establish the person's skill set, Mariana says. Yeah, slow to hire. Yes, Kim, and what comes on the on the end of slow to hire, Kim, slow to hire and quick to? 
The vine says the process will certainly ensure that the job gets done. Move away from fear. Danae says deadlines. No lean. Reminder to communicate properly and give people a chance. Kim, yes. Slow to hire and quick to fire. Try and allow myself to trust more and allow for upskilling my team as delegating is not something I'm good at. So everyone, I, I want you to understand something very, very, and it's crystal clear. If you want to grow in your career as an individual, if you want to grow, you have no choice but to embrace the art of delegation. Get it right because it's going. It's going to give you a sense of power and a sense of freedom because now you've got it right. Okay. All right. So everyone, on Thursday, the 19th of May, um, we have our next coaching session with Paul Orko. He's unbelievable. I got to um, listen to only 10 minutes of his presentation in the UK. And he had me like on every word, on edge, on every word that he was saying. Absolutely unbelievable. And he is going to talk about um, wellness beyond the spas and salons. And that's quite interesting because wellness is definitely a topic that um, is moving and shaking our industry, right? And um, he wants to just share with us how it's going to infiltrate beyond the spa um, in, in, our, in our world. Okay, I don't want to give away too much, but it really is the most incredible session. So be sure to be there on Thursday, the 19th. So that's two weeks away from today. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's one week. It's next week, Thursday. And then I just want to quickly make sure that everybody is on all the social media platforms so that you are informed at all times. So our Facebook page, Spa Professionals Guild, okay, um, follow there because we give lots of tips and advice on our Facebook page. Then we have our Instagram page, Spa Professionals Guild. It looks like this. I just want to show you what it looks like so that you can follow it. There's also my coaching page, which is called um, Spa Business Coach Online. Okay, so be sure to follow there too. And then we have, boy, where's my next one? Then we have our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so we have the YouTube channel where all of the recordings to our sessions are kept. Please make sure that you are subscribed to it, number one. And number two, you have no idea Every time somebody messages me, Marisa, I need help with this, I go, go on to the YouTube channel. We've actually done a session on it. The information at your disposal here is incredible. It's actually priceless how much information is on this YouTube channel and how many recorded sessions of valuable, valuable tools for you to be able to run better businesses. For those of you who are members to Spa Professionals Guild and doing the course with us, there is the member lounge. It's a private member lounge where we can share and exchange ideas. So make sure that you are on there. And then last but not least, a couple of questions and then we're done. Can you go into the chat box once more? Okay, there's going to be two more times you're going into the chat box. And write where you would like to improve or where you want to do better in your business. One is hiring the right team, motivating your staff, staff that retail, rebook, and that they don't do treatments, but they do memorable experiences. Client retention, getting clients that you have to spend more money, new client acquisition, running effective KPI meetings, keeping cost of goods in line for maximum profits. Which ones? Which ones? Just go into the chat box, even if you only mention one today. Where would you welcome some help? Or where would you like to improve in your business? Have a look and go into the chat box and let us know. Okay, so we've got hiring the right team, running effective KPIs, new client acquisition, retention, 
in all these areas, retail again, hiring the right team, new client acquisition, maximizing profits, client retention, keeping cost of goods in line for maximum profits. Okay, interesting. Missy, KPI meetings, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so from what I see, there's always room for, for growth, right? Hiring the right team, Dominique says. So here comes my question to all of you. Who of you on this meeting or on, on this call have got a business coach, are undergoing some form of education and development in your field, which is business management. That's your field because you manage a business, right? So how many of you are taking the time out each week or each month to be coached or to learn or to grow or to develop in some way or another. So the interesting thing is that not many of us take the time to do this. And we learn slowly, that's how we learn. And by making lots and lots of mistakes, okay? Oh, that's great, Danae, we have a star coach once a month. That's awesome. So I would like to encourage you, if you're not already learning with us, is to join us on our business management training. It's continuously evolving. It's equipping you to run businesses in this new world that we found ourselves in. It transforms your management skills for the future. I grab any occasion available like today. Well, well done. But I still want to encourage you to join our community and to make sure that you invest in yourself. If you are not growing yourself as an individual, how can you expect your staff and your business to grow? It starts with a foundation and the foundation is you as the individual. Okay, so reach out to me. You all know where I am, either on WhatsApp or on email or on social media. And let's get you on board. Let's start this learning process happening immediately. We currently just over 80 members from 19 different countries and growing, which is fantastic. And yes, and we look forward to keep growing all the time and keep our members evolving. And, and, and I love to hear all the testimonials and stories that I get back of the differences that we make in people's businesses. So once again, yes, the foundation is you. It is you. What is our word for the last time today? It is abundance. Okay, so I hope that you all are, are seeking out every day ways to be more abundant and ways to attract more abundance into your lives. So I hope you all had the best session ever. Can we all show camera so I can take a picture, please? It would be amazing. For those of you who aren't shy, are you able to put your beautiful faces on so that I can take a picture of everybody? It will be so nice. Yes. Oh, Bandile is there posing already. Good. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, everybody, let's get a nice picture of everyone. Show your beautiful faces, everyone. Hello, Lucia, you look so gorgeous. Okay, I'm about to take the picture. One, two, beautiful smiles. Done, beautiful. Okay, everyone, go into the chat box and just give me your checkout word, please. Let me know how you are feeling right now. How was that session for you? How's it, um, everybody feeling? And then it's time to say goodbye. Until next week, Thursday, I suppose. Okay, so grateful. Oh, thank you, exhilarating. Thank you so much, Missy. Thank you for that beautiful comment. Thank you for joining us. Bill, join us again, please. Charlotte says empowered. Kim, grateful. Dominique loved it, empowered. Oh, I love to see that. I'm so hot. Good. Great.
feeling motivated, lovely, lovely. So for all of you who are doing this course, by the way, this delegation process is in your course material step by step. Otherwise, you can go and watch the recording as well. Okay, just to recap on it again. Okie dokes, everybody. Have the best evening wherever you are or the best morning or the best day, whatever time of day it is for all of you. And it was amazing to see you again. Cheers, everyone. Ciao, ciao.